everyone, and welcome back to our second episode of TUTV. I'm Devin. And I'm Jack. How's it going, folks? We got a lot of exciting stuff for you guys. How you doing, Jack? Yeah, this week I've been super busy. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, and I'm trying to get swole now, too. Me too. We are both trying to get swole. For real? Yeah. I think we should be workout buddies. I already got one. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Could you like? Did you keep up? Like, I don't know. oh, you didn't, you didn't just turn me down. You just turned me down on camera. We can cut this. Yeah, we're gonna cut that. <laughs> we're gonna cut that. <laughs> for for like, I know you do like surfing and stuff. Do you yeah. have to like? Is there like specific like surfing exercises that are Surf, like? more just balancing? Really, uh, there's not. Yeah. Really, I mean, if you're good at swimming, you're you're probably fine. Yeah, <laughs> if you can swim, you won't good. drown. <laughs> Easy. And awesome. um. Yeah, for this week, we're going to be doing a special interview. Hope you guys will enjoy that one. Yeah, got uh, something we're both really interested in and a lot of new sports and news topics that really interest you guys. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome to this week's TUTV news segment, where the news is always fresh and never frozen. I'm Hannah Horton. And I'm William Bennett. Ladies and gents, we have lots of news as we go throughout News Central, so let's get started. While Hurricane Florence has come and passed, the effects are prominent in the Carolinas. Most rivers and waterways will remain at dangerous flood levels for days to come. The hurricane has killed over 40 people and still poses a threat to many residents, as flooded areas can be extremely dangerous. About 5,000 people have been rescued in North Carolina since the storm made landfall over a week ago. Meteorologist Bob Oravec says, quote, all that water is going to take a good while to recede and damage can still be done, end quote. These backups in water systems as well as other heavy rains have prompted flood watches and warnings in adjacent states. The Japanese space agency, JAXA, claims to have made history on Saturday by landing two unmanned rovers on an asteroid. The rovers are collectively known as Minerva 2-1 and are functioning well. This is the only part of the overall mission, though, as a third rover is planned to land in early October. JAXA is also planning to blow a small crater in the asteroid. This will allow them to collect samples from below the surface. The carrier spacecraft will then return to Earth by the end of 2020 with this collection of samples. If the mission is successful, they will have achieved the world's first sample return mission from a C-type asteroid. Japan is racing NASA for this achievement, as the U.S. mission is due back to Earth by 2023. The soft serve ice cream machine in the Pat Case Dining Center is known and loved by many a TU student. However, most know that the machine has been out of order for multiple weeks with no end to this tragedy in sight. Students looking for a sweet treat sadly walk past the soft serve station as it sits there showing no signs of life. For some, this is the only source of dessert that they can have. Freshman Sophia Olsner recounts the happy times when the ice cream machine was running, saying, quote, It was the highlight of my meals and something that I would look forward to. The ice cream was the one dessert I could have because of my allergy, and now I can't even have that, end quote. No one knows when the simple joy of trying to swirl your own soft serve will return and end these dark days of ice creamless meals. Amazon dominated tech headlines this week with an unveiling of over a dozen new Alexa-enabled products. Some were simple the updates to current models such as an Echo Dot and Echo Show. Other products displayed were new devices like the Echo Sub Speaker and the Echo Auto. But the product that took the cake and generated the most social buzz was the Alexa-enabled microwave. While it doesn't have Alexa built directly into the appliance, it can take commands from other devices. As Amazon demonstrated, Alexa microwaving a potato. It also works with the dash replacement button and can order more of something when the pantry is running low. The microwave comes in at $60, which undercuts most countertop microwaves sold at other retailers. In the market for a car, recent reports indicate that potential buyers are learning, leaning more towards purchasing used cars over brand new ones. Rising new car prices are pushing shoppers to pre-owned car lots, where they can find large selections of young vehicles with low mileages. Demand for used cars has been, strong, usually, has been unusually strong and will remain at heightened levels because of high interest rates and rising prices. Industry analysts say that the price gap between a new and pre-owned car is at one of the largest points from the past decade. This is due to manufacturers making new vehicles with more expensive technology. Meanwhile, the used car market is being flooded with cars that are only a few years old and have been well maintained. Nearly 40 million pre-owned cars were sold last year, which was more than double the size of new car sales. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice received an interesting donation this week. 
Officers went to pick up donated bananas on Friday and discovered 540 packages of cocaine hidden among the fruit bundles. The donation came from Port of America in Freeport, Texas, but officers are unclear of how or when the cocaine entered the shipment. Several federal entities are now investigating the incident as it is a huge find and could potentially lead to drug distributors. Police analyzed the contents and valued the drugs at almost $18 million. The fact that first the strawberries and now the bananas. What strawberries? So in Australia, they have been finding needles in strawberries oh and gosh. that's terrible because nobody can enjoy strawberries and they even like kind of recalled them in New Zealand. What is happening to our fruit? <laughs> How are we ever going to like be able to consume strawberry banana smoothies in peace? I really don't know. That's really concerning. So everyone be beware when buying your produce this week. Um, well, that's all the time we have for a TUTV news segment this week. Join us back next week when hopefully the Pat Case soft serve will be back in business. I'm Hannah Horton. And I'm William Bennett, and this is TUTV News. Hello everyone, today we are here with Adrian Alexander. He is the Dean of McFarland Library here at, here at TU. So thanks for coming, first of all. <laughs> My pleasure, Zach. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, no problem. So um, if you don't mind, tell us a bit about what it's like to be the Dean of the Library here, real quick. Being the Dean of an academic library is not a job where you do the same thing every day. Uh, it involves administration, so that means budget and personnel, strategic planning, I also do fundraising for the library, so I'm meeting with library donors and potential donors. I do a lot of faculty relation work. I work on two faculty senate committees right now, one, okay. one which is dedicated to McFarland Library. The other is the Academic Computing Committee because I also work in the academic technology space. Uh, okay. What, ki what kind of things do they do for academic technology? Uh, what we do, uh, what, I, what I'm responsible for is uh, the academic technology services, primarily the learning management system, Harvey, which we oh, call yeah, here okay. at TU, and also some other supporting technologies, our, our, our uh, video content management system called Panopto, uh, which uh, instructors can use to record lectures, for example, out of class time and then have it available on Harvey to watch and then use the class time for something right. more productive like a Q&A or more in-depth discussion of the content. Uh, so we have several technologies that work together and that group of people report through me to the provost's office. Right, okay, great. And just recently, um, I heard that you got, came back from London. If you don't mind telling us about uh, what you're doing out there. I'd be happy to tell <laughs> you about that, actually. Uh, the original purpose of my trip was that I was invited to speak at a conference on scholarly publishing in London uh, as one of three librarians on a panel. Okay. Uh, and I happily accepted that, especially since they were paying part of my way to get there, <laughs> That's uh, which, nice. which the budget officer at TU was very happy about, too. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, uh, that, that invitation came in late July. And in mid-August, we learned that uh, the great uh, writer Servius Naipaul, who is our only Nobel laureate at McFarland Library, passed away in okay. London, and we have had the archives of Naipaul since the mid-1990s. Okay, we acquired yeah. the bulk of the archive at that time with the stipulation that anything else that he produced from that time going forward until his death, we would get those papers as well, as, mm. well, as, as, as well as some personal papers along with that, such as right. letters and other things. So we had acquired some materials a few years back, but we knew there were still some other things out there. So our head of special collections and archives at McFarland, and they're the people who are responsible for all of our archival and rare books collections, suggested that it might be an appropriate time to pay a visit to his literary agent in right, London yeah. and just start discussions about how much, to learn more about how much material was there and how organized was it and, and when it might be available for shipment right. over to us for okay. processing. So. I was able to accomplish two things on that trip, nice. plus do some nice sightseeing. <laughs> I hadn't been great. to London in a few years, so that was kind of That's fun. great. What, yeah. when, do you, what does it take for um, like a college library like ours? What, what is the process of acquiring 
archives like that, like originally, I mean, we already had... Um, Some of those things are donated, but a number of years ago, going back in, into the early 1980s, uh, TU began building a very significant uh, collection of archival materials in modern literature. The one that's probably most well known is our James Joyce Library. James Joyce is one of the most famous Irish writers of all time. Uh, and we have one of the five best James Joyce libraries in the world. Hmm. Uh, we publish the James Joyce Quarterly here at TU. Oh, As yeah. a result of that focus on Joyce studies, uh, we've been publishing that journal. We don't publish it, the English department does, but uh, right. that journal's been published at TU for over 50 years now. Wow. So we support the, the scholarship that goes into producing that journal, but also we support Joyce scholars all over the world. And along the way, we've acquired a lot of other similar type of uh, author collections and literary collections uh, that have to do with modernist literature. Right. And then with Naipaul and some others, we've gone into post-colonial literature and uh, have a significant uh, collection in that area as well. And we support not only research here at TU, faculty and scholars here and students, but we have scholars from around the world, literally. Uh, a scholar really? on Naipaul from, from Australia is currently working with, uh, with us on a book that he's producing. Wow. And for that kind of thing, like, is such a huge scale. Like, thinking of Tulsa, the small, small it college. It is, yes. Somebody it's, from across the country is... It, know, it often comes across. as a surprise to people to learn that the life archive of, an, of, a, of, a, in, of an author of Indian descent who but was raised in the Caribbean and studied at Oxford University and has been named one of the top English language authors of the 20th century, right. has his archive in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Similarly with Joyce, who would imagine right. that Tulsa was a place for Joyce studies, but it is. That's great. Well, thanks again for coming. Thank you so much for the information you've given us, and uh, thanks, thanks again. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Anytime. Awesome. And welcome to TU TV Sports, where we don't play games, we just, we just cover them. I'm Devin. And I'm Sam Moody. Uh, we have some updates on how our teams played this weekend and some uh, shots on the volleyball team. So uh, let's get started. The Golden Hurricane football team traveled to Philadelphia last Thursday to take on the Temple Owls. Now Tulsa did not start well as quarterback Luke Skipper began the game with an interception return for a touchdown. The offense quickly responded and drove the ball the length of the field, finished off by Corey Taylor in a short run. He finished the game with a 96-yard and two touchdowns. Both teams ran the ball well, with Raquel Armstead gaining 108 yards and his touchdown. It was turnovers and missed opportunities once again for the Golden Hurricane. Tulsa gave up the ball five times. Temple came out on top, 31-17. Tulsa will play next October 4th at Houston. The Tulsa women's soccer team began conference play on Thursday as East Carolina made the trip to Hurricane Stadium. The game was evenly matched throughout the contest, but it was Tulsa who scored the crucial goals. Mia Darden scored on either sides of halftime, and Anna Williams added another goal to seal the win for Tulsa. The final score was 3-1. On Sunday, the Golden Hurricane played host to Cincinnati. Anna Williams was on the score sheet again as Tulsa scored first. However, in a span of five minutes in the second half, since he notched the two goals they needed. The 2-1 loss saw the Golden Hurricanes split each of their opening, game or opening conference games. Their next match is on October 4th in Dallas as they take on SMU. The men's soccer team hosted SMU on Saturday morning on the back of two straight losses. The Mustangs scored first in the third minute, a lead they would not surrender for the rest of the match. Neither team managed to stand out offensively as the game was well fought on both sides. Tulsa will then lose their third consecutive game of the season and their fourth in the last six. Hopefully, the men can get back on track and Monday night when they, when they travel to face Denver. and That was really cool, seeing that volleyball game. It, that volleyball game was, uh, it was great. It was yeah. awesome. It's just not another, another tough week for sports, yeah, though. Yeah, I know. Lions played this week. The Lions did great. Sorry, Patriots fans, but it had to happen. <laughs> it did. It really did. Uh, but Baker hope. Mayfield, though. Baker made Mayfield. His, uh, debut in big fashion. I. Uh, it it was great. I I hate how they're still starting Tyrod, but 
Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Yep, Stay absolutely. Moving. And I'm Devin Lyon. We'll see you guys next time with TU Sports. Hello and welcome to TU TV Entertainment. I'm Christina Boole. And I'm Claire Scott. So let's get started. The America's Got Talent season 13 finalist, Michael Ketterer, was recently arrested in Hollywood for suspicion of domestic violence. The singer was arrested after getting into a fight with his wife that left a red mark on her skin. Ketterer claimed that the incident was a misunderstanding and his wife is choosing not to press charges. He was released after paying a $50,000 bail. This arrest has come to a shock for most as Ketterer has been admired by many as a father and talented singer. It is speculated the band Maroon 5 will be the scheduled headliner for the 2019 Super Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. However, the release of the news was not received positively by most Atlanta natives. Many argue Atlanta is the home to some of today's greatest singers, entertainers, and dancers and want to see an artist or group like Usher, Ludacris, Future, and Ciara. This will be something for the Super Bowl committee to think about, especially since last year's performance done by Justin Timberlake had show ratings down by 9% with impartial reviews. Kevin Hart defended his night school co-star Tiffany Haddish in light of negative comments made about her. In a recent interview with The Breakfast Club, Cat Williams made ill comments toward rising comedians of color and specifically targeted Haddish's comedy skills and experience in response. In response, Hart, Hart pointed out Williams' declining startup in Hollywood. Hart suggested Williams should take responsibility for his status in the comedy game instead of blaming those who run the business and help upcoming comedians instead of putting them down. Millie Bobby Brown, 14-year-old Stranger Things actress, had asked for her fans and backlashers' respect in her close friendship with Drake. This backlash comes after rumors of the 31-year-old rapper and father allegedly dating an 18-year-old model Bella B. Harris. Brown values her friendship with Drake, saying, I'm lucky to have people in the business extend their time to help me further my career and offer their wisdom and guidance. She accuses critics of her friendship of being weird and adds, I'm very blessed to have amazing people in my life. You don't get to choose that for me. Bill Cosby could be sentenced up to 10 years in prison due to the allegations made attributed to drugging and sexual assault. This victory for the hashtag MeToo movement, which started around the time these cases came to light, will hopefully start a permanent social change. Rebecca O'Connor, VP of Public Policy at the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network says, People are watching carefully. I think for a lot of survivors, they can see themselves in this story. The nonprofit's hotline has received a high volume of calls within the last year, which is only a testament to the encouragement given to survivors of sexual assault, especially those who were scared to go after criminal charges in the past. Noah Cyrus, younger sister of Miley Cyrus, put a unique product on the market this past week, a bottle of her own tears. Cyrus, who recently suffered a breakup from rapper Lil Xan, chose to put 12 of her own teardrops for sale on the site Pizza Slime for just 48 hours. The price for such an unusual product, $12,000. However, for fans who aren't looking to spend so much on Cyrus's emotions, she's also selling a coffee mug with the phrase, quote, Noah Cyrus's tears, end quote, for $10. This incident also followed a recent post from Cyrus on her Instagram, which included a short music video of her new EP, The Good Cry. Pop star Rihanna is not only a successful singer and actress, she is also a humanitarian. Rihanna was recently appointed to be an ambassador to the island of Barbados, her home country. Her official title is Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary. The Barbados Government Information Office described her role as having, quote, specific responsibility for promoting education, tourism, and investment for the island, end quote. Rihanna has portrayed her love for patriotism for her home country through her philanthropic efforts focused on health and education in Barbados. The singer said in a statement on the matter, quote, I look forward to working with the Prime Minister Motley and her team to reimagine Barbados, end quote. The State Fair is coming to Tulsa this weekend, September 27th through October 7th. The Tulsa State Fair is described as the city's largest family event and is also officially certified as a, quote, autism-friendly location, end quote. The fair is packed with a wide variety of events throughout the 11-day span, 
from music to rodeos to rides to food and cooking contests, and even Disney on Ice, there will be events for every age. With gate admission starting at just $6 for kids and $10 for adults, it looks like it's going to be two weeks of pure fun. Well, that's awesome. I'm super excited for the fair to start. I didn't even know what was happening. Yeah, me too. And it's so close to campus, so yeah. it'll be so easy to go to. It it's will so be. fun. Yeah, I didn't make it last year, so I'm Yeah, I'm, I love I'm some really... funnel cakes. Oh, oh yeah, funnel cakes. Food. <laughs> and I think they, say, they said rodeos. I don't know. I've never okay. been to a rodeo Just the whole before, experience. But, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Nothing well, like some Oklahoma culture. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. Um, I mean, are, is there anything specific you're excited for at the fair? I mean, the funnel cakes, probably. The funnel cakes, that's the biggest thing? It's the best part. Wow. Um, I mean, I'm always up for good rides, but... Yeah, I take a pass on the rides. Yeah. Get too dizzy, but, you know. Yeah, I, I have definitely gotten nauseous on rides before, but hopefully <laughs> that won't happen this time around. Won't have to um, bottle up our tears like Noah Cyrus, Abby, I having know. a good time. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been through breakups before, but not that bad. <laughs> well, that is all we have time for today. Thank you for joining us here at TUTV Entertainment. I'm Christina Bull. And I'm Claire Scott. Wow, what a, what a sad time over at the entertainment desk. All right. <laughs> yeah, it was... Very emotional over there. Jeez. I hope uh, you watching are all okay dealing with this emotional content. <laughs> I have a fun story for you, actually. You're talking about Luke Skipper, the QB here at uh, University of Tulsa. Yes. Um, when I was in high school, I played football for Brian Adams, that was in Dallas, like mm -hmm. in the inner city. And uh, we made it to the playoffs, and we actually played Forney, who Skipper was the quarterback for Forney. Oh, really? And they weren't in our district, but it was playoffs. So we had to play someone like outside of our district. Okay. And they creamed us. They actually destroyed us. They was put it up 70 on the board. Was it because of Skipper? Like, was yeah. he? Oh, he was wow. Amazing. Yeah, he was yeah. really good. And uh, I haven't talked to him since, but like, I mean, I could say to him, like, hey, I played you. If you're out there, Luke, give me a, uh, give me a call. <laughs> I don't know if you can find my number, but. I mean, he's only got a comment in the YouTube page, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, comment. Luke, comment on the, on the, on the thing. And while you're there, just hit the subscribe yeah, button. Subscribe. Too. I mean, it's not maybe deal. the like. The bell button. Share. Facebook, check us out. <laughs> Make it a playlist. I mean, whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. And the, awesome. the whole the tier, the tiers thing, man. Yeah. I, uh, I wonder if someone actually will spend that money. What I wonder is, like, if she even, if, if, like, what the ratio of just water to tears is. Because you know she doesn't, like, fill up the whole thing with tears. That'd be really hard to do. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, how do you aim it? Do you, like... Yeah, I mean, you probably have, like, a funnel. <laughs> like, a funnel over <laughs> on your eyeball. I mean... Simple that sounds, like, that sounds painful, though. <laughs> Yeah, make it work. I'm gonna funnel my eyeball. Not in your eyeball. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, wow, we got a roller coaster for emotions here on, on episode two. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Now I think we're gonna go work out and get swole. Yeah, right. Let's, let's get it. Awesome. Let's get it. It's chest day, baby. Lights on them. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. Have a good one. <laughs>